I'm William Prince. You're listening to The Sunday Verse. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with Julie Penner, coming to you from the song shop in Winnipeg, Manitoba. So, William, you're, you're calling this episode Indians and Christians. Why? Well, for starters, so we don't get lost in it, um, Indians is very tongue-in-cheek. I've never identified as an Indian person in my life. Uh, for a long time, it was Aboriginal people. And I always liked the original part of that. But truthfully, you know, Aboriginal and Indian, these are terms given by the government to identify us, whereas we prefer the first inhabitants of the land, the First Nations people, and that encompasses all the different territories. I come from Treaty 1 territory, representing Treaty 1 gospel between these different places I've been and lived. The American Indian, that's still a common phrase for uh, for any American listeners. I understand that even... Uh, Native people, First Nations people from the states may prefer Indian. That's the that's the thing. But just where I'm coming from, uh, it's a bit of a mislabel for Treaty One territory First Nations people. I think I'm feeling. Protective. I am anxious. I'm truthfully anxious to put it into the the world to be listened to. You know, um, there's always a negative stigma that comes with gospel music itself, because there's a lot of deep-rooted shame and guilt that comes with religion, and that's like where the songs are coming from. And for a long time. I, I lived in that guilt and shame, and it worked. It was like, oh, you're doing wrong by the architect, you know, and the, the headmaster says, like, that's a, there's an obedient relationship that you can have with Jesus, uh, with faith and whatever it is you choose. But I think because this record stands for so much and it really does represent one of the truest forms of me, like, that's where the nervousness is coming from. It's because I, I really have to be truthful about it all. Does it feel vulnerable? Maybe this is as vulnerable as I've ever been. Maybe that's why it's it's harder. The Indians, so to say, the Indians are blocking traffic again. The Indians are making me late for work. Oh, what are they complaining about now? These pipelines and that's a deadly thing to live with. <laughs> um, just in regard to carrying that around. When we talk about the time in which this is released, it really comes back to, I'm so affected by what we're seeing going on in the States right now and the treatment of, of black people there. I've kind of buried this part of me, even my own indigenous identity. I think about like, that's the success of it all. It worked. It made me kind of ashamed to be First Nations, it made me struggle and, you know, carry those notions that this person's probably judging me because I'm a large Native man and being made to, to feel that way, like, a part of it went away when we were singing, I guess, when we were doing the music and that's what I hold on to. That's what I feel I'm trying to bring from all of this is that there was a beautiful time and this was the soundtrack to it regardless of that reserve being hard to live on i guess believing in the lord was enough to like what else was there there was the bleakness of the reserve or the promise mm -hmm. 
So I see why it works. But like, why should I apologize for that? Why should I feel nervous about that when it's maybe the purest, best part of me? I was a dorky kid. I loved being early and setting up the guitars and doing all that stuff. That was... Like for church. Yeah. Yeah. That's what church was to me. It was community. It wasn't a place to show me I wasn't doing well enough. Man, you get enough of that in the real world. Songs that you sang in church would be some of the first songs that you ever learned to sing, right? Yeah. I mean, church... I, I grew up going to church. And it's true, you know, as a kid, it's not about dogma. It's it's not about all that kind of stuff. It really is about community and, and seeing the same people all the time and and singing the songs. And, and you learn how to sing with other people. And there's so many great harmonies on your record. It's one of my favorite things about your new record is all the backup singers all singing together. It's really, it makes you feel like you can hear all the people in the room with you. And it's a really... It's a really comforting feeling. That's the beauty of it too, is that this is the first record made that way where uh, the one take was even more important. We were a band doing this together at the same time, just like it would have been there. Uh, it was the only way to, to make this happen. And again, being nervous there, like to, to try it this way. And uh, it turned out to be the best record, well, one of the best sounds you could ask for. I think of uh, a cousin of mine who's very traditional and would make Bible jokes to me growing up and we would all kind of have a back and forth rapport and it was just that same community of teasing that First Nations people are so renowned for and it's a beautiful communal thing and we understood, we respected each other as much as we were joking, we... It was always about the respect, and it's an interesting thing to, I guess, to be a First Nations man and and sing those songs. I never questioned when my dad did it. I just thought it was fun, and it was really in the adulthood that I learned, oh, like, where this comes from and what it actually is and what its intention was. I always thought that if I really fully embraced that history, maybe I would scare off listeners or... I wouldn't be as appealing. Your religious history, your your Christian background, you mean? You felt like both, that would... Both of these backgrounds we're talking about on this record where it's, yeah, First Nations man and, you know, at one time identifying as a Christian. The irony isn't lost on me is what I'm trying to say. I guess it's my own detachment from the place. You know, I, I I went to the reserve at a younger age. I didn't grow up there from day one. And I didn't have to stay there as long as some have living under the conditions. And we were doing the best with what we had. And at that time, it was this music. It was uh, It was everything to me, what it stood for. And getting better at playing in a band and in hopes of... This will help me lay the foundation for the songs I want to write for myself one day. And, and uh, it did. I'm thankful for it. I, I don't turn my back on it. I understand and address and recognize what it isn't and what it is. Uh, now it's based around this coexist idea. Two parts of me, like I say. If, uh, if you're ever worried about my indigeneity... Look up Chief Peguis and listen to my dad's records. You know, uh, two halves, two different worlds kind of coming together here. It was important to me. It's becoming more and more important in real time as we talk about it. And I didn't plan for how it would feel to finally address it. But when I think about it, the music itself, it still rings in a way that brings me joy. So much so that I reverted to it in this time of crisis and dealing with my anxiousness, my I worry as is. 
I say that a relationship with God is not often sought for those of privilege who needs it really, and it's those destitute for someone to talk to. Think of even my own mother in the wake of my dad dying and, you know, her conversations are much different and now that he's gone. But they stay the same with uh, the Lord she believes in and loves. And we even had the conversation of like, Mom, do you understand that your love for Jesus is, you know, the success of a program put in place so that we wouldn't exist anymore? What does is, what is your mom say? Well, that's the beauty of, of faith is my mom is incredibly faithful. I admire that about her. Because on the time, in the time when maybe I'm reaching the bottom of my own, I got this, I got this, she reminds me, you know, the Lord looks out and takes care of you. And like, ah, sure, I guess. And then, but humbles you for a second. Don't ever forget where you've come from and what you've lived through. It's a delicate relationship with uh, what's left in my, I guess, categorized Christian faith. I say, I've taken the best of it. And that's the songs and that's the gratitude to me. The song that we're going to feature in this episode is called All His Children. And it was a big hit for Charlie Pride. What do you have to say about Charlie Pride? He was, he was one of your family's favorite uh, artists when you were growing up. Charlie Pride was always in the conversation of music. When I think of the John Fogarty's and as much as I praise, you know, Christofferson and Johnny Cash, you got to think of Charlie Pride at the time and what he was living through being a black performer. I think of um, how that song lived with my dad so much. He would always sing that undeniable chorus. It was so beautiful. And uh, I would find myself when I just felt like singing nothing else, like I would go back to these songs that are on this record in a way, just to warm up before a show. And this song especially uh, is, is one that I'm proud of. I'm proud of what the reaction would have been if my dad got to hear <laughs> these <laughs> songs. You know, I think we did a great job. But Charlie Pride and I drew these these interesting parallels to to my own journey. Like I, I received a number of comments in the beginning of my career where it's like I I heard you somewhere and I looked you up and I was blown away by the fact that you're First Nations from here. Again, that whole, wow, he's great for a native guy. And I was reflecting upon how when people would hear Charlie Pride on the radio and then go to one of his concerts and be totally struck that a charming, strapping black man would come out and sing with that voice and command the audience. And, and that's in days when racial issues were more strained than they, well, I, like we said, were they more strained? They were, uh, weren't as documented because of today, now, like where we see all these things on camera and such, but just imagine what was happening back when racism was more acceptable, the norm. He spoke about being deterred and called different names and it didn't stop him from singing the music that he loved. It didn't stop him from sharing his gift. He was a spiritual man. And uh, while singing all these great country hits, lent himself to a beautiful gospel album. I don't know, it was modeled after that. I guess it was always a part of my psyche that Johnny Cash made a gospel record and Christopherson's Jesus Was a Capricorn and Sunday Morning Coming Down and John Fogarty and the Blue Ridge Rangers, you know, working on a building, all these great albums that were a part of my life growing up. And this is me 
trying to join the club, <laughs> putting something there that, yeah, we, we come from these similar backgrounds, singing an old hymn book. And there was, uh, there was some of that in Charlie Pride's life. And I like that we share that. And I like how much that song meant to my dad. Thank you for listening to the Sunday Verse. From my new album, Gospel First Nation, this is All His Children. When you're standing alone With the mountains and the sea Where the arms of this world open wide Where the truth is as plain As the falling rain And as sure as the time and the tide You know we're all His children His next of kin That's the way it began No matter where You're part of the family of man When you walk down the road And the sun is on your side Where the sweet river breathes O'er your face Where you don't hear Everything sort of falls into place You know we're all His children His nest of kin That's the way it began Leave.